in a world looking for something to listen to. A group of friends rise to the challenge. It's Pop Samurai. Welcome, everybody, to a Pop Con Milwaukee uh, interview uh, brought to you by Pop Samurai uh, here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Uh, you can go over to uh, popconmilwaukee.com and buy your tickets for the convention, Pop Con Milwaukee, uh, November 5th and 6th at the Crown Plaza uh, Convention Center. We're here joined by Bobby Clark, the Gorn from the Star Trek original series. He's here joining us. Bobby Clark, how are you doing today? I'm doing fine today. Thank you. Um, now, for the people who don't know who you are, but you are, I mean, again, for the Trekkies out there and many fans that you have, I mean, you are um, quintessential pop culture icon for for uh, the Star Trek universe. I mean, of course, you've had other uh, roles like in Gunsmoke. Uh, you've had some small roles in there. You have you were in an episode of Kung Fu. Um, and uh, but uh, the Gorn, I mean, would you say that the Gorn is probably one of your biggest roles that you've uh, you've done? Well, I'll tell you, the Gorn is not my biggest role that I have ever done, but I'll guarantee you my four episodes of Star Trek are the luckiest four uh, episodes I've ever done in my whole life in the picture business. <laughs> okay. All right. So, I mean, uh, can, can you give any listeners out there who, who aren't really familiar with you kind of a, a breakdown on uh, who, who you are, a, a little bit on your career, a little bit, if you don't mind? Well, I'll be glad to. Uh, in the first place, right now, uh, who I am, I am the Gorn. Uh, I'm, I'm the only one there is, so I am him. Mm -hmm. And I also did uh, three other episodes of Star Trek, and one was called Return of the Archons. Mm -hmm. The other was Mirror, Mirror, and the other was The Apple. And uh, uh, on The Apple, I didn't have much dialogue. I didn't have any dialogue, as a matter of fact, but I did do a hell of a fight with, with Kirk. Mirror, Mirror, where there was two Gorns and two Captain Kirks and two Chekhovs and two of all of these people. I was one of Chekhov's henchmen, and uh, I had another battle with, with Captain Kirk there, and I got zapped and gun, and I uh, had a pretty nice little thing on that one. Now, Return of the Archons, I had a nice little role in that, but uh, it seems that the... Uh, the arena and the Gorn have been my, 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 my claim to fame for the last 15 years, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I really love it. And uh, the motion picture industry for 50 years of, or more, I have been a cowboy. I'm a cowboy and always will be. We see that in uh, your kind of your roles that you have in uh, Gunsmoke. Well, I was eight to... years on Gunsmoke. I started off in. Uh, in the 60s on a show called Rawhide. Uh, most mm -hmm. people know that. And that was my first introduction to the motion picture business, more or less. And uh, like I say, I'm a cowboy. I rodeoed, did, did movie extra work, and did stunt work, and then became acting and stunts. And then I became a second unit director. Oh, okay, okay. Um, can, can you give us what led you to uh, the, the career of getting into like the roles you did with uh, in acting with uh, the Cowboys and even leading up all the way up to the Gorn uh, that you? Uh, well, that that's easy. I can I can I can explain all that to you in one word. In 1957, I got I got out of the Navy, and in '60, I got my job as is uh, extra in the motion picture business, and the reason was money. I just needed a good job and easy work, and which turned out to be hard work and hard money. Oh wow! That, that, so basically, you were that just, led you... that led me to pursuing my acting career. Really? So I mean, you were you were essentially you were, you were like I'm looking for something that's going to give me a good amount of money, and and uh, uh, really, it's like acting open up for you? I mean, have you ever thought about acting before that moment where you're like, I need money or? No, no. I, I, when I was in the Navy, I, w I was telling myself when I was ready to get out of the Navy, I said, I am not going to wear Levi's or cowboy boots or anything like that anymore. I'm going to be a, uh, well-dressed type of a person. So when I got out in 57, I became a, uh, a salesperson for Pontiac, and 
I didn't do too good, so I went broke there. And then I started doing uh, different sales here and different sales there. And then finally one day I just said, this isn't working. So then I figured, well, some of my cowboy friends, I talked to them, and I was rodeoing a little bit. And they said, well, why don't you get a job working extra in the picture business? And that was it. Wow. Wow. Okay. And then uh, so – you pursued acting. You needed money. You got uh, advice from your friends. And uh, what led to the role of the Gorn? I mean, how, how did, you said it was a lucky break that you were able to get onto the the Star Trek series. It, it was it was lucky for you. Um, what led to that? Well, what led to the to that situation was I had worked many years as a cowboy, and I had met several different directors. And this one director, and in particular, his name was Joseph Pevany. He happened to have gotten a job on Star Trek, and he he didn't he he just knew I could do what I had to do, so he just called and brought me in as a uh, as a stuntman actor. Okay, and that was that was the Gorn was my first uh, episode in Star Trek. Wow, oh, so that was I mean it was the first role you did. I mean how how was it be, being the Gorn on that set? When we look back on onto the, the actual scene and the, the fight scene with Kirk, I mean you you were clad in and this full body suit and it must have been hot. It, it, uh, can you give us a little bit of what your experience was playing the Gorn? Well, the, the, the Gorn was a, a heavy rubber suit. It was all all neoprene rubber and then they had some rubber on top of the rubber. And it was manufactured by a, a, a man named Wal Chang, mm-hmm. and uh, he made a lot of a lot of uh, costumes and stuff for the movie business. And uh, we filmed it at a place in California called Vasquez Rocks, in the uh, in the township of Agua Dulce, which is Sweetwater. And uh, it was hot. Although we filmed it in November, it was still hotter than Hades because I had the rubber suit on and everything, and it aired in January of the following year. Um, that, that's probably it. Uh, it was very cumbersome to work in, and we got her done. Oh, okay. Uh, now, uh, can you? Because it was a heavy rubber suit, as you said. Uh, how, how mobile were you in that suit? Because uh, when you when we notice uh, watching the scene again, uh, you the Gorn was a very slow moving character, and uh, how how mobile were you in that suit? Well, the, the 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 reason I was so slow was because I was a reptilian creature, and uh, uh, that's how they moved, uh, the director said. So he wanted me to act that way. But as far as it being a, a cumbersome thing, uh, to to put it in my arms and walk with it, I, I'd uh, I'd have had a a hard time getting anywhere. It was it was it was quite heavy. But having it on my body, it was just like having a extra clothing on or something, and it was, you know, it was a little hard to bend and and hard to do different things with. But uh, you could do it, and uh, walking was the hard part because we had a lot of sagebrush and and a lot of little trails to walk down, and I had the feet on the on the costume were about thirteen or fourteen inches long, so. Okay. Okay. That that meant, that also added to the hardship of walking. How how long after the the episode airing uh the arena and you know you you continuing on uh did you realize that the the Gorn is actually becoming kind of like a pop culture, you know, thing? Uh how long after did it did, did it take for you to realize that? Well, I, I I believe I did my first Star Trek episode or or convention was in 1999. Okay. I think that was my first Star Trek convention with the Gorn. Okay. The reason uh, it, it took so long was because, here again, uh, I, I did the Gorn, and it aired in 1967. Uh, we filmed the Gorn in 1966, November. I got out of the Navy in 1957, and I worked from 57 up until, oh, I'd say the the early part of 1960. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's when I became into the picture business. But uh, as, as to your, your, your question, and that was because of my oldest, my at that time, well, my oldest son. 
Uh, he's also a cowboy. And uh, he kept telling me, Dad, why don't you do a convention? And I kept telling him, what for? This this went on for several years. And I'd, I've, heard of, I've heard about the conventions, but mm-hmm. it, was, it, it wasn't my thing. I, I'm a mm-hmm. cowboy. Okay. So anyway, I just tell him, all right, we'll do it. Let's let's give it a try. That's because I started seeing a few action figures of the Gorn out and about. Hmm. And then I became the Gorn, and I did my first uh, my first convention was for Creation Entertainment in Pasadena, and it was called the uh, Grand Slam. Hmm. Okay. And then and from uh... then on, it's it's been a big role. I've just been on a constant role with the uh, conventions and stuff. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, and so, I mean that leads us into I mean I guess our, our next question which which would be the convention circuit. I mean, I mean, how do you feel being, you know, in the mix with the you know the convention and and actually uh, how how are your feelings on the fans reactions to you meeting you? Oh, when I started out I was completely not a fan. I just I was just doing it. But as time went on, and I would I would see all of these 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 people that would come to see me as as the Gorn, and not just me, but all all the other actors and 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 people in the motion picture business, it it just started putting it, it just shined a different light on the business for me, and and I just I just kind of say I I guess maybe I just fell in love with all the fans because. Uh, I could realize that uh, all of these people they they go out and they work five days a week, forty hours, and save their money and save their money on a weekend. They come in and they spend spend all the money that they've made working on on Star Trek things and and other sci fi things, and it just it it it, it kind of turned me into a, a sort of a Trekkie. With that question, right? With, with that right there, I mean, uh, are you a fan? Are you, do you still keep in touch with like newer Star Trek things, like the movies? Um, are you still uh, an avid watcher? Are you a fan of them? No, okay. no, I'm not an avid watcher. However, I did watch uh, uh, Star Trek: The Next Generation, and uh, oh, I watched several other Star Trek things too. But okay. I wasn't into. Uh, I, I didn't delve too much into the, the all of stuff. the Star Trek things. Just there's just a few that I like to watch and okay. stuff like this. You said you're you're a cowboy yourself, and you fancy yourself a cowboy. I mean, are, are you more into the Western genre then? Are you a big fan of like Western uh, movies? Well, and things? I'm a little too old to do. And while I still, I'm, I'm still into it. I still love horses, and 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 I play around and stuff like that. But I don't rodeo anymore, and and I don't I don't rope anymore. I'm just I'm, I just have a nice, pleasant little place where I have my horses and stuff like that. But uh, I'm 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 well aware, and and uh, I, I I go after uh, some of the, uh, the the sci-fi shows that that go the conventions. Okay. Okay. And I and I like and I I I do enjoy doing them. What are you up to these days? Are you still uh, an avid? Uh really really into the mix of the circuit the convention circuit are you still out there all the time or or is there anything else that you're up to nowadays uh the 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 biggest thing i do nowadays are conventions okay i mean i have a place here at home and i've got i got enough work here to do on a ranch so uh i i do have plenty of that and uh it's just uh it's just been a a hard uh it's been a hard life let's say hmm. And and conventions is like uh, it's, it's something I love to do, and and I, I pursue it more than anything else now. Okay, okay, um, yeah. I mean, thank you so much for joining us here for this for this great interview we had with you. Um, uh, again, if any for everybody out there who's listening and who uh, is getting ready um, this weekend, uh, Popcom Milwaukee, November fifth and sixth at the Crown, Crown Plaza Hotel and Convention Center. Get out there, and you can you 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 yourself can meet Bobby Clark, uh, the Gorn, um, this weekend. I mean, uh, hopefully uh, you look forward to meet, meeting Bobby Clark, and of course I know Mr. Clark here. Uh, oh, I will. I will be there at the Popcon. Yeah, and I know you in uh, Milwaukee. Yeah, and I know and, you're uh, fans, right? You bet. And I'm looking really forward to it. And I, if if uh, the, the the fans, you know, you don't really have to tell, 
you don't really have to tell the fans too much because they they have a word of mouth that's that's bigger than anything we've ever seen. Oh yeah, and uh, they they will bring people there and people will be there and and I just I just hope I can meet every one of them. All right, I thank you so much for joining us. I appreciate it so much uh, for you coming on here and uh, talking to us a little bit about yourself and uh, just you know getting getting uh, more people out there you know to know more about you and, and your feelings on you know meeting them. So I mean, hopefully, people out there are going out there and uh, getting getting your tickets to go out there to meet Mr. Clark and all the other great people we have going over there to Popcom Milwaukee. Again, go to popcommilwaukee dot com and you'll be able to find your tickets there. Um, so uh, you guys get out there, check it out. And this has been a Pop Samurai interview for the popcom milwaukee thank you so much for joining us and uh we'll look forward to seeing you guys here and we'll look forward for you guys to see mr bobby clark at popcom milwaukee thank you thank you very much will our heroes podcast survive spread the word subscribe and tune in next time same pop samurai time same pop samurai channel